Well, hello folks, here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from No SLLC. That's me. Um, some of you who follow some of my videos know my house is aging gracefully into the sunset. Uh, it's uh, 12, 13, 14 years old. I don't know, I can't remember anymore. Memory is the second thing to go. So I uh, discovered I needed to know that, do another little house fix because when the house gets about 10, 12 years old, everything starts falling apart. And this is what I had to fix this time, how I fixed my conked out house number light. Now, many people won't have this. Um, where I live, all the housing is fairly new, typically 15, 20 years old or, or newer, brand new stuff still going in. And they almost always have this, the, a il, uh, illuminated light on the side of their house, so you can see it at night, so emergency vehicles and so on can... Uh, spot which house is which. So uh, the other day I was uh, wandering around in the evening and noticed that this light didn't didn't come on. It's supposed to come on at night and turn off in the daytime. Well I didn't get too excited because heck the thing is over 10 years old. It's got the had the original bulbs in there. Um, so no big deal. Um, I just uh, went down to the local hardware store and bought two of these bulbs and these things are only about an inch long. They're tiny little things but they're almost six bucks a piece. I can't quite figure that one out. Uh, and they're these, this wedge base here. You notice the pins are bent over. They don't stick down like they do in a lot of the uh, applications. Um, so this is what they call a wedge base bulb. Um, and uh, when I took the old ones out, they were, they were burned out, but they were covered in uh, stucco because uh, when they stuccoed the house before they put the number plate on, they sprayed it all over these little bulbs. So I scraped all that stucco off the bulb, the old bulbs, and couldn't find any numbers on them. I must have scraped the numbers off or something. So when I went down to the hardware store, the local hardware store, to find this particular kind of uh, wedge base, the only ones they had were 12 volt bulbs. So I'm figuring, because I don't know anything about these bulbs, uh, I guess they're all 12 volt. So I bought two of them at six bucks a piece. Man, what a rip off that is. Um, and. Uh, uh, went home to put the little puppies in All right, so I stuck those little dudes in there and um, that evening I noticed uh, that they were a bit brighter than uh, what had been there before um, which didn't get me too concerned because once again I figured oh it was all that stucco over the old bulbs All right, but uh, the next morning uh, I noticed they were still on and they were still very bright now that's not right they should have turned off when the sun came up Right, because I've got this photo cell on the other side of my house, actually on the side of the garage, it's supposed to turn them off and turn them on. So it's supposed to turn them on when it gets dark and of course turn them off when it gets light. All right. So the next morning though, I noticed uh, once again that they were off. Okay, that's cool. That meant to me at the time the photo cell had shut those little dudes off when the sun came up. So I didn't pay attention until that evening, and come that evening, I noticed that uh, they didn't come on in the evening. So that was a bad thing. So now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what in the heck is going on there? They didn't come on. They went off, but they didn't come back on. All right. So I checked the bulbs once more, the two $6 each bulbs, 12 bucks worth of bulbs in there, and found they were both burned out again, the brand new ones. So... I whipped out one of my trusty test devices and uh, decided to do a little troubleshooting. So if you've got this kind of thing, uh, maybe you will have to do some of this troubleshooting uh, too. And so first thing I did was um, check to see if I had any voltage on the bulb uh, sockets. There's actually two bulbs. One goes in this way sideways and the other one goes in over here sideways. So there's actually two of these little one inch long bulbs. So I did uh, my zippy dippy tester here uh, and discovered that uh, in the daylight I had 18.5 volts standing on this um, uh, little socket right here. Uh, well that's not right because there's not supposed to be any voltage on there during the daytime because the photocell should you know, open the circuit up, take the voltage off. So there shouldn't be any volts on there in the daytime. And worse than that is I was sticking 12 volt bulbs in there, but you can see plain as day that uh, the power here, this is uh, AC, 
well, is 18.5 volts of AC. Well, I can tell you over apparently the space of about a day, 18 and a half volts going across a 12 volt bulb pops those little puppies because it did. 12 bucks worth of those little pop things. Yeah, you know I'm really tight, huh? 12 bucks for two bulbs. So, um, I located what I suspected was the transformer for the lights. Um, because this thing is inside my garage and I wondered for a long time if in fact this is what was powering the, the lamps, the, the lights there on the front of the house. So I disconnected the wires, just unscrewed these things, pulled them off and went back out uh, to look at uh, the sockets to see if the voltage had dropped off, which if this wire feeds the socket then it should have. Now I don't know if you can see this on the on the video, but this says 16 volts. This transformer here is a 16 volt transformer. Well, actually, it's putting out 18.5. Um, so when I walked out there after I pulled the wires off, uh, there's no voltage on there. So that definitely proves that um, that little transformer is the thing that's feeding these little lamp sockets right here. But just to be certain, I went back up with the wires off and stuck my uh, voltmeter AC voltmeter on here uh, to uh, see if there's voltage still standing on this. I would have expected that the 18 volts should be standing on this and in fact it was. So the transformer is putting out 18 volts even in the daytime. Mm. Alright so there's two solutions to uh, this little problem. I guess you can choose the either one. I chose the simpler one. Uh, two solutions to burning out 12 volt lamps when you got 18.5 coming out of the transformer is uh, uh, use a higher voltage lamp, duh, uh, or change out that 18.5 uh, transformer for a true 12 volt transformer and then you could use the really commonly available 12 volt bulbs. So that's what I decided to do was uh, find some higher voltage lamps. So I went all, all over the place. I was out doing other things so I stopped at every hardware store I could find even auto supply places, every place I went, nobody had even heard of an 18 volt lamp or a 24. Um, so what happened was I ended up ordering a batch of 24 volt lamps, figuring yeah they'll be dim on 18.5, but I won't have to worry about them burning out for another 10 years or so. So they should come in sometime next week. I didn't uh, do this because I didn't want to pull the old one off the wall and go through all that trouble because it's it works it's just a higher voltage than the uh, lamps that are commonly available so then my next step was to figure out why there was 18.5 on the sockets in the daytime now it seemed logical the photocell was probably the culprit so I'll give you a little schematic here a very simple one this is an AC feed coming from your breaker panel or or um, if you got a really old house fuses you know you can still buy fuses I those screw-in types. It's got very unusual out here um, to even hear about a house that still has those screw-in type fuses. But in any case, this comes from the fuse of the breaker box, whatever. This is the power AC, 120 volts standing on this black wire. I'll show you this wire in just a minute. And that is uh, hooked with a wire nut to the little stub coming off the photo cell. And also off the photo cell is a red wire and a white wire, also with wire nuts attaching the little stub to the wire that's coming out of the wall. So this is coming out of the wall uh, where the photocell is located. This is and this is. So you just attach this photocell with three wires. It's a really simple easy thing to do. And then those wires go inside the wall in my garage and go over to the transformer which is inside the garage. The photocell is outside the garage. So this internal wire goes over here to the transformer. You can't see this wire on the primary but you can see the two um, screws here which is the this one let me back up and I'll show you those two screws right there are those two little X's right there and then the wire goes back in the wall and goes over to the lamp socket so so what happens then is this you got 120 volts uh, standing on this wire when the photo cell is closed which it should be at night that allows the 120 to go through over to the transformer which then transforms it down from 120 down to 18.5 volts and this is still AC over here it's not DC there's no rectifier in here so it just steps down from 120 to 18.5 right and then that takes you over to the lamp socket so one would say uh, <clears throat> 
the 18.5 may be too high, but it's there, which means that the 120 is there during the daytime when it when it should not be. All right, so that's the uh, layout right here. Don't worry too much about the white one because that's the common. It's kind of sometimes called the return. I won't go into electronics right here, but you always have to have a return. So I got a hot lead you know, going over to the lamps and basically a return lead coming over. <coughs> All right, so that's the really simple layout. So I'm figuring um, the photo cell has got to be the culprit because it's locked in the closed position. Uh, even in the daytime when it shouldn't be. Now I want to give you a safety note here. Those of you who are not familiar with electricity at all, uh, anytime you're messing with 120 volts, uh, that can be lethal. Um, so you have to be very, very careful about this. This thing is hot all the time unless you open the circuit breaker and take the fuse out. Um, in my case, I didn't need to do that. I've been doing this kind of stuff a long time, so I, I, I did mine hot because I didn't want to go try to find the breaker for this dopey thing right here. Anyway, you really should turn off the uh, power if you're going to change this photo cell out. Turn, turn the power off at your uh, breaker or um, uh, fuse box, and you'll need an, a voltmeter to see that this power is off because it's just a bare wire coming out here with a wire nut on it and the only way you can tell is to have a voltmeter so you need a voltmeter before you start messing around to do this it's a simple simple thing but you need to do it safely if you're going to do it alright so here's a, a close-up of the actual photo cell I pulled this off the outside wall right here and this kinda of sticks through that hole right there and there's a, this locking screw that holds it in place here's the three wires the red the white and the black. Now this is the one that connects right with a wire nut to the wire coming out of the um, breaker panel right so that connects with a wire nut to the hot lead and it's hot all the time unless that breaker is open. This then is the through connection to take you over to right over to the transformer right so and then this is the common it just ties to a bunch of other white wires which are common to uh, just about actually the whole house. This is not a ground. This is called the common. All right, so I pulled those things off. This is the outside of the garage right here. And you'll notice here's the black wire, here's the white wire, and here's the red wire. This black wire is going to the circuit breaker. The white wire and the red wire are going over to the transformer. But this is hot. Can't emphasize that enough. So if you're going to do this, and leave the wires exposed for a little bit you really ought to put the wire nuts back on here particularly if you have not pulled the fuse for this that'll be hot all the time very dangerous all right so I went down to the hardware store and got a direct replacement for my uh, photo cell which was kind of interesting because they didn't have the bulbs but they had the photo cells good grief um, also note um, that when you put the new one in and you test it out, if that's that's your problem, you know, it takes a, a little while for these th this thing to activate. It's got a delay in here, so go in the one direction. I can't remember which way it was, from off to on or on to off. Can't remember. It's about 15 seconds or so, but the other direction was almost a minute. So when you're testing this, you got to be a little bit patient to make sure that it it's. Uh, handles that time delay and you wait long enough to see that you've gone through the time delay. So I put the new photo cell in, it's just those three wires, um, and I had now no volts in the daytime. That's good. All right. So then I covered the photo cell up to simulate dark, right? Um, and the voltage comes up after a short delay, right? You can see 18.5 comes up. So that means my photo cell, in fact, was bad and the new one is working correctly. Unfortunately, I don't have the bulbs, the higher voltage bulbs. I'm going to stick 24s in there. Uh, and as soon as I get those 24s, which should last forever because I'm driving them at 18.5, so they'll be a little dim, but uh, they should last another 10 years, probably longer than I will last. And there you go. All I need is the new higher voltage lamps and Bob's your uncle. There you go. Probably most of you won't need this, but uh, basic troubleshooting for these kinds of things, like a doorbell circuit. Actually, a doorbell circuit 
operates very similarly to this. You got a step down transformer, you got a power supply feeding it, you got wire going over to the ding dong bell someplace in your house. That can be interesting. I, I've had to chase that down too, although I don't think I ever put a video up on it. So even if Bob's not your uncle, I'm done. <laughs>